What's up, everybody? Uh, we got a lot of news. Uh, mostly, uh, a lot, really. We gotta get to this Raw review and SmackDown, and, you know, it's a lot of news I've been hearing out for the past day or two, which, you know, isn't making any sense to me at this point. You know, I'm not sure where it's going, but... Uh, well, let's, let's kind of get through Raw first, because, uh, they haven't really been on the big thing, and it's not a lot to say about it. I'm probably a couple, maybe two, maybe three bigger things out of the whole stuff, but... About what's been going on, but, uh, we kind of kicked off with Raw as... As they were in Los Angeles, California, at the Staples Center... Roman Reigns came out, just just getting booed, and they, you know, once again, they all try to play him up like John Cena, you know, you can cheer him, you can boo him, but everyone's making noise about him, <laughs> like, they're still doing this whole John Cena thing, like, you can love him or hate him, but they're, they're giving him a reaction, they, 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 they just won't turn this man heel, they won't, they really won't, hold on. Yeah, but, um, moving on with the show, it sent a message, but, uh, Roman Reigns came out, talking about his family history, of course, Samoans and all that, and that he's the first member in their bloodline to win a U.S. title, but Lana came out and says, you know, you, you hurt Rusev and everything, and Reigns pretty much, you know, said, bring your husband out here if he wants a title rematch, but Lana said, who said we'll be challenging for the title match and everything. And he says, you have no respect for me or my husband. You've destroyed our wedding, our celebration. And pretty much she, she said, wipe that smile off your face. Call him a stupid boy because he smiled at her. And Rain said, you need to go relax. Go get your husband and deliver him, you know, his Bulgarian balls out here and say it to my face as Lana pretty much told him shut up and go to hell then until Rusev came out they brawled people were actually chanting thank you Lana and we want Rusev but Rusev was able to get the better of them and kicked them into the into the um, rings out well over the barricade then and Rusev took the title and pretty much celebrated on the top of the stage until for some reason Roman Reigns must have ran all the way around through the crowd back through the stage and hit him with a superman punch and he says uh and he pretty much said reigns he says lana you want me to go to hell well i'm taking you both with me at hell in a cell for the u.s title which i don't to be to be honest i want this feud to end now reigns has kicked the living crap out of rusev so many times it's hard to tell rusev is he, rusev has even got anything over reigns because Reigns just stands tall, stands tall for almost three or four weeks now. It looks like Rusev doesn't get the better on it any time. And why are we continuing this feud if he finally got the U.S. title? Why do we have to keep killing this guy? This reminds me when John Cena took the U.S. belt from him. And he still kept losing. Another thing, let's talk about another weird thing tonight. The Cruiserweight title was on the line. And they played a video package for it. Which they said last week. T.J. Perkins will be going against Brian Kendrick for the U.S. for the cruiserweight title. Because when the end, Brian Kendrick hit the bully choke or Captain Hook, as they put it, and won the match, which I ex thought he won, because people popped for it. Next thing you know, the crowd, the announcers play it also. Oh, there's a not title match. He's got the better of Perkins this week. Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all said last week it was a cruiserweight title match tonight. Why is it not now? Like, it makes no no sense. It just makes it makes no type of sense really. So I, I don't know where this was going and they said it was a title match last week, but why did they do this? Because the crowd was good and you know finally we put the cruise weight somewhere early in the show instead of putting them at the third hour like usual now. Couldn't wait make people wait until they're all sweet. Even though this was a better crowd. Um they pretty much interviewed Seth Rollins then with uh, Michael Cole about Kevin Owens and Triple H and he said he deserved the rematch and everything and you know we can see why what Triple H did and what Owens had to do to get the title because I've done it myself before in cashing in money in the bank 
and Owens is just a cog into the machine right now. And he's going to take that title from Kevin Owens. And talk about Stephanie using the whole referee trick on him to screw him out the title and stuff. Which was okay, I'll give it that, but... He pretty much agreed with Kevin Owens did, you know, being, you know, doing the stuff he's done to get the title too, because he did himself. Even though they haven't really focused that much on Triple H. Braun Strowman, another squash match against Chase Silver, which he finally spoke this time, saying that he wants more competition and stuff. I have wasted these guys. He told Foley to bring some real competition to him next week. <clears throat> uh, Bailey pretty much was talking to. Um, Sasha Banks about her title match tonight, and you know she probably say this is the Trish and Lita territory right now, and she she says she isn't you know isn't more than being in the main event. It was her you know taking about where her career is and everything, and Bailey pretty much you know she can't think of a more de the deserving person than Sasha to overthrow the Queen that is Charlotte, and pretty much SmackDown. Yeah, SmackDown. They pretty much um I said she was gonna take her out tonight. But Strowman, who else do they have we like to face Strowman? Because I don't know. He's just because it's been squash match, squash match, squash match, squash match. It's about time these things in now because this is going too much now. Uh, Cole messed up the uh, Royal Rumble location, which said was located in San Antonio, really. But he said San Diego like a moron. Uh, Kevin Owens which and Chris Jericho came out, which was probably the best segment of the night with the New Day came out calling people stupid idiots and that Seth Rollins is nothing. He won the title. He is taking the title. He's the most dominant champion right now. We beat Enzo and Cass last week and they brought up the list uh, the list the list clipboard now because Jericho will put you on the list as he puts it. And he says, you know what? We should challenge New Day for the tag team titles. And you know, that sounds great but you know, Cesaro and Shams already have a, a title shot right now. But Jericho said, you know, Cesaro and Sheamus are not best friends like we are. We could be the tag team and Universal Champion at the same time. He went on to, to go on to say, and you know, it sounds like a lot, a lot of work hand on his plate. But you know, Jericho says it's not like I'm asking for a shot at the title, and people start chanting Y2J and all. Say, agree, we should go after the New Day. Let's do it. And so the New Day came out then, and they had a great back and forth as um, Jericho and all says, you know what, Biggie, you're on the list. Kofi, you're on the list. Xavier, you're on those pandemic that, you know, couldn't help the children in uh, these, this questionable cereal that you guys put out. And, you know, you guys have jumped the shark. And pretty much what I thought was funny when New Day with Xavier would say, you know, uh, jump the shark. Uh, when's the last time you jumped over anything? And he plugged Luke Cage. Make sure everybody go watch that show. And that you will never beat the WWE Tag Team Champions is the New Day, pretty much. You will never beat them. So they will have a match on later tonight, which was probably the best segment on here tonight. So that happened. Uh, Sami Zayn, which still directional in this right now. When it's Titus O'Neil or the Titus O'Neil brand for some reason, which I don't kind of glad they put them away from Darren Young, but um, these two went against each other. Sami won kind of like whatever. <clears throat> so Lara and Sheamus were pretty much uh, arguing each other again and Mick Foley still so you guys gotta start bonding together, okay? You proved to me that you are tag team wrestling right now. Prove it. Uh, next after that, which that, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, since we gotta send the club back to the bottom, with Gallows and Anderson, they went against Golden Truth, which they almost couldn't even beat them at one point. It, you know, it's funny when they said that. <laughs> this is a, this is you know really really funny, but it wasn't even a squash. Now they didn't even dominate. So these guys are the most dominant tag team in months. Dominant tag team in months. They've been booked like clowns for over for months ever since they came here. They either got the the living shit kicked out of them by Roman Reigns multiple times. They have been beaten by the New Day, back to back, really, and they didn't even win the titles for them. They have came out and do these horrible testicle and old people jokes, which weren't even funny in one bit. They have murdered the club on here, so no, it's it's kind of odd, hard to say like order the most dominant tag team in months. Dominant tag team, they've been they've been booked like fucking clown shoes for the past few months. It's hard to take them seriously right now. 
and they couldn't even hear the beat uh, Golden Truth almost. So now they want to go the serious route. Y'all should have did that in the beginning. I don't know where, where this backwards booking comes off. Make them look like fools. Oh, now we got to make them serious now. It's dumb. It's dumb. Uh, Ashton Kutch and Danny Masterson argued with Owens and Jericho. <laughs> Owens said, you know, that seven show would have been better, you know, than me with Jericho and stuff. And he did the stupid idiot thing with them. Enzo and Cass came out for the breast ca uh, cancer survival thing, you know, the Susan G. Coleman, which you know, a lot of people, you know, call them, you know, these titles and that soft, and they did their, you know, usual SAWFT thing, and they gave them titles, replica belts, pretty much the women's belt, just to, you know, show their appreciation, even though people question this whole Susan G. Coleman thing is a scam, as CM Punk put it last year. And now what kind of company of all the horrible stuff and people that work in there saying they do not give a shit about this Susan G. Coleman thing or cancer research, really. But they do do this every October when it comes up. And it's a good cause, but some people are calling this a scam. New Day went against Jericho. As um, pretty much Masterson and um, Ashton Kutcher were on commentary. And um, pretty much talking about... They barely talked about the match. They talked about how Kevin Owens was probably fat or, you know, the physique of him and Jericho. They barely focused on the match. They were just plugging their show for Netflix. But New Day won since Seth Rollins distracted him. And New Day got the pin. And then Seth Rollins came out, hit the pedigree on Jericho as Owens stood in the back. And they're back then. Uh, next... Pretty much what we had on the show, uh, I'm trying to remember what, they, what else they said right here. Stephanie McMahon talked about Seth Rollins. So what are you doing out there? And you're replaceable like everybody else. And pretty much Rollins talked about um, Seth said, But the worst thing Triple H's decision was, was marrying her. Rich Swan went against Tony Nese. Put out actually a really good match. Tony Nese got the win on um, Rich Swan with the uh, introductory driver. And um, beat Rich Swan. They put on a good match, give him that. Uh, Cesaro and Sheamus went against Raw White and Mark Carradine. Well, pretty much another squash match, beating up some jobbers. Just doing a whole oddball tag team thing. Charlotte, they show video package for Charlotte and Sasha, which they can't wait to move to the end to do this for the uh, the show. I uh, played a video package from NXT to WrestleMania, and they were headed to the White Hair and Dana Brooke were headed to the ring until Bailey pretty much got involved. Responded and they caught the door to explore. Brooke pretty much pressed uh, Bailey into a wall and Bailey threw her into a crate then and you know left her with a knee injury so she won't be there. So it was a one on one, which this is where the hot shotting comes in for this title match. Were they the main event of Raw? Yes, they had, were. The last time women main event in Raw was well, actually for a title match because I know some people say segment, but we're talking about the actual title match was when Trish and Lita uh, fought at that time. And the thing with the women, the thing with the uh, women right here for uh, Charlotte and Charlotte and Sasha Banks, they had a really great match, but here's the odd part of this whole thing of them hot shotting is to get them ratings since they're so desperate for ratings on Monday Night Raw and they can barely run this show right as it is. Which, one thing that was nearly insane was when Charlotte did a corkscrew out from the top of, from the top rope to the outside of the ring, and ba nearly, barely even hitting Sasha. Pretty much hot shotting and missing the entire move, the entire move after she did it. And it was a good match, it was a good match, and Sasha retained, regained the Women's Championship and beat Charlotte. She beat it for the title, again, even though it's just something odd, it was like a meth moment in a way. The first time, it was really great, but it's one thing that proves that lightning doesn't strike twice, okay? We've done this two times, and the odd part about it is that the Hell in Cell pay-per-view is like, what, are two weeks away in S Sasha Banks' hometown? Why wouldn't you have waited to give her the title there? What are you going to do? Like they did before, let her win on Raw, like she lost it at SummerSlam, but she lose it here. And by the way, there may be a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view with both of these two, so I don't know how that will work, but... I don't know, this women's division just doesn't make sense because it's only centered around three people, which is Sasha, Charlotte, 
and Bailey now. At first it was centered around them two featuring Dana Brooke, but it is just mostly either these two fighting for the title or Bailey will get involved. So it's like they hot shot at the main event just so they can get another title change and hopefully people watch it, which is going to start crying, man. So what, he's going to defend it in Boston and lose in Boston in the Hell in a Cell match, if there is a Hell in a Cell match with these two. This is just rumors right now. But is this really necessary, what we need to do for his title? I didn't mind the match. I liked the match. But was there really a point of doing it again on Raw to have another title change so y'all could get some ratings? People kind of knew where this was going, really. And like I said, I'm not seeing on a match. It just wasn't a bad match. But this, it's just like, why do it again with the same thing with Sasha winning the belt? If she's not going to win it on the pay-per-view in her hometown, I believe it will be for uh, Boston and Hell in a Cell. So, I, what if, it, if it really is a Hell in a Cell match and she does lose it, it wouldn't make sense because it feel like doing deja vu all over again. So, I just question that title change, really, to why they did this for, Sha for Sasha Banks to win the title again. So, I just didn't really, I, like, the first time they did, it was a big reaction to it. And, like, it was still a good reaction, but it was, like, one of those whatever moments in a way. Before, it meant something. Now, it's just, like, I'm glad she won it, but it's just, like, eh, why was the point of doing this match? And you're not, not going to wait for the pay-per-view that's coming up. But that, that's my opinion of I just think they hot shot at the uh, main event. And, you know, Raw isn't a lot to talk about tonight. Only thing that was really great was the women's title match in the Jericho and New Day segment, in my opinion. And the Cruiserweights, of course, always killing it, even though it should have been a title match, which they advertised two title matches, but was only one, which didn't make sense. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.